Hello everyone and welcome to the History Unicorn, Reddit Finds. Today we are exploring the world of shadow figures, and the unexplained from the subreddits. Our slash cryptid encounters, our slash human neod encounters, our slash ghosts, and our slash paranormal. Links to the original posts are in the description below. Let's dive in and find out exactly who, or what ran past you. Back when I was about 3 or 4 years old, I lived and still live in the same apartment. Whenever I would walk down the hallway to my bathroom or my mom's bedroom, I would see strange figures in the dark not just shadows, but physical beings that I was able to touch. When I turned 6 years old, I didn't see the figures as often as I used to. But one night, while I was walking down to the bathroom I was tripped by one of the figures. It didn't just stick its foot out in front of me or anything like that. Instead it came up through the floor and grabbed me by my ankles. I fell and hit my head on the kitchen bar to my right, and got knocked out. When I woke back up I saw another figure in front of me. And I immediately covered my face, because as a six year old. I still thought that it made the figures ignore me, but instead of it just going past me. It picked me up and put me back on my feet. To this day I still don't know why the figure helped me, but I do know that not all of the figures were good. Now I don't ever go down that hallway without the lights on, even during the day. What did I see? A couple of weeks ago, on the western side of Wisconsin. Along a gravel road that was lightly wooded. I saw a shaded figure walking nonchalantly across the road, into the woods almost perfectly invisible. Except for when it passed a tree, on the edge of the road. Between the whiteness, of the freshly fallen snow. And the dark bark of the tree, I would have completely missed it. Unfortunately for whatever it is, the shadow turned darker than the tree bark. And was more pronounced against it. I passed by at that point, and have been thinking about it ever since. Here are some of the comments from this post. OP commented on their own post. Gliding would be a misnomer, it moved smoothly. Not a lot of body movement, it was very hard to see almost like smoke with bipedal movement. And yes, it did stop next to the tree. And turned towards me, that was how I was able to make out its definition. Swagmoney10 commented. R slash Glimmerman. This kinda sounds like what you're describing. OP responded to Swagmoney10. Sorry, it didn't stop to go up the bank just slowed. The tree was a few feet from the bank of the road. I would say the gravel road is a couple feet lower than the top of the bank. The road is cut into the side of the bluff going down into a heavily wooded draw. Ice Cream Sandwich 2022 questioned. Can you describe the figure more? Size. Shape. Movement. OP responded to Ice Cream Sandwich 2022. It was a little bit taller than average, maybe 6-5-ish or so. Just a guess, maybe taller. Human in shape and moved with an upright loping stride. Until it slowed and smoothly traversed the bank of the road. Going into the tree line. Ice Cream Sandwich 2022 responded to OP. Smoothly traversed. You mean it glided? Stopped moving and glided. Human looking? Bigfoot. Something else. Did it acknowledge your presence at all? There are many more comments on this post, with at least one illustration. If you would like to see more on this subject, the link is in the description below. Hi everyone. It's always nice to see I am not alone, and there's subreddits full of people that have seen strange things similar to me. I want to preface this by saying, I am a fairly logical, non-religious or spiritual person. And as far back as I can remember, in my childhood. I never believed in anything, but what can be somehow related to science. Except these three encounters I had. One when I was seven. One when I was fourteen. One when I was seventeen. I am now twenty-five, and have not had an experience like this since. When I was seven. It was a very snowy early morning, close to Christmas time, like it is now. I was walking hand in hand with my dad, 
not too far from our apartment block. When in front of us, there was this very cool looking tall person. I thought before they turned around. With their huge black coat and grey unruly, almost spiky hair. When we got closer, the figure turned around. And had the creepiest stare and smile on its face. A huge smile. And the whitest skin I have ever seen. I was in shock. We passed high, and I asked my dad if he saw how that man looked. And he said he didn't pay attention. I started telling him he looked like a vampire. I am from near Transylvania. He kept saying I have a very vivid imagination. I definitely felt scared, and watched by the entity. And will never forget it. At 14? I was walking with some friends, at night. And when this car full of people lit up. Like a family with their grandpa. Except grandpa had a huge head. The size of half the windshield. He looked like he could be 8 feet tall. If not in the car. He had grey skin, white disheveled hair, and a trance-like stare. My friends didn't notice. Rest of the family looked regular. I was again scared. Then, at 17. I was walking with my aunt, a bit further from her house. When we noticed this couple staring at us. Yes, she did too. A human-sized couple, female and male similar in height to me. When we got closer I grabbed my aunt's arm and said. Whoa, are you seeing this? They had the same exact face, with creepy eyes and smile. As the man had, when I was a child. The two had the same face, despite one having long hair. Only these two, had very yellow skin. And deep under eye circles. Again, black coats. Later, at home, my aunt said they looked like they were suffering from severe hepatitis. Or another illness, that caused the yellow skin. She is a nurse, and tried to make sense of it. Again, it was scary. And they were staring at us. I felt great though that she saw them too. Has anybody had similar experiences? Another weird thing I saw, when I was a kid. Was a person disappearing without trace from above in our apartment. My great grandma pointed it out, and I was already thinking it. Here's some of the comments from this post. Portrait of a fox commented. The first one somewhat reminds me of Indrid Cold. OP responded to portrait of a fox. Oh my god. I googled the name, and one of the drawings look exactly like the man I saw. Except mine had this long black coat on. Wow. Is it weird that now I know he might be real? I'm not as scared anymore. This scary man that haunted my memories for 25 years, suddenly seems. Like maybe he was just sending a message or saying hi. As creepy as he was. Portrait of a fox responded to OP. I'm glad that it might ease your stress. There seems to be a lot of encounters with him. At this point, he became an archetype of a creepy man with a sardonic smile. John Keel documents. Possibly first sightings of him in his book, The Mothman Prophecies. Including several talks between Indrid, and the witness. The collector of names questioned. Hey there. Your stories are quite peculiar. I've read about many similar experiences through the years. What name would you give to your three tormentors? When I was about 10 years old, I would go to bed around 8.30 pm. I used to fall asleep in my mom's bed. She had a TV in her room, so I would fall asleep to cartoons. And when she would come up to go to bed, she would wake me up and take me to my bed. One night, I was sleeping in my mom's bed as per usual. And I woke up to the door opening. I didn't wake up to look who it was, because I figured it was my mom. It was just me and her living at our house. I heard her walk towards the bed and then stop. It was a good five minutes, before I heard the bed creak from her laying down. She laid down and put her arm around me. She never said anything, and neither did I since I was half asleep. She didn't wake me up, to move me to my room. So I just figured she was letting me sleep in her room that night. I drifted off, when I woke in the morning. I rolled over and saw my mom was gone. I walked downstairs, and saw her sleeping on the couch. The title screen for Pretty in Pink was playing on the TV. In the background. She woke up and smiled, and asked me what I wanted for breakfast. 
I told her I'd just make myself a bowl of cereal. I headed to the kitchen, and turned around to thank her for letting me sleep in her bed last night. She looked at me confused, and said you didn't sleep in your room. And I told her no? She said she fell asleep on the couch. I said no, you came in the room last night. She looked at me even more puzzled. And said no, I've been down here the whole time. I kept telling her no, you lay down next to me. And I even remember you putting your arm around me, and stroking my hair. She looked horrified. Again, we lived alone. My mom has no history of sleepwalking either. To this day, my mom and I are still freaked out by this. And don't really like to talk about it. Never happened again. Never had any other paranormal activity, in the house either. I posted this on another subreddit, by the way. Just figured I might get some insight on it here as well. Here are some of the comments from this post. Sesh Parank commented. The spirit laid with you and was at peace, maybe. I have often heard of spirits finding peace or comfort, and leaving. Jayhawk444 also commented. It could have been a sleep paralysis incident. Frig666 chimed in. When I was 15 or so. Had similar experience. I was lying in bed looking at the selling. I hope in some moment I feel asleep. But for sure it didn't felt like this, because I was still looking. Or dreaming looking, at the selling. Then I felt someone's presence, couldn't move. While after bed sheet raised up. And someone laid down next to me. Scared like crap. I've couldn't move for a while. When I finally managed to move. I've jumped of the bed, turned lights on. And spend rest of the night, at armchair wondering WTF was that. Paralysis probably, but that was scary like hell. Cure it here too advised. Your youth, and equanimity with it? Lead me to hypnagogia, or false awakening. You had a good one, compared to most. Perhaps a little astral projection. Your mom dreamed what she wanted. Comforting, not troubling at all. Arnia82 also commented. While Sesh could be right, I know too that evil deceives. And it could have been something along those lines. And you're not acknowledging it was a blessing. Good or bad. It all depends, and only the perspective of your feelings. At the time can answer that question. Be grateful, it was a peaceful slumber that night with comfort. And don't be creeped out by it. That will color your opinion, on any other paranormal situations. If you let it. This just happened. It was about 12.45 am. I was driving down one of the main roads, in my hometown. After hanging out with my friends. As I was driving back, I was passing by store outlets. I saw a group of what looked like teenagers, standing around on the side of the road. I squinted my eyes trying to get a better view. Not believing that there were a group of teens, on the side of the road. As I got closer, I saw one of their arms shoot up. As if they were trying to flag me down. But knowing that it's not the greatest idea. To be picking up hitchhikers, especially at nearly one in the morning, I kept moving. Driving past, I was very confused. Based on what I had just seen. Out of curiosity, I stopped at the light nearby. And made a U-turn, to take a second look? I wasn't gonna go back and offer them a ride cause that just spells danger. But I wanted to mentally confirm what I saw was real. However, when I went back they were gone. Though I didn't want to seem like a creeper. I turned into the parking lot, right behind where they were standing. To see if they gave up and walked away. After driving around the lot, for five minutes. I didn't see a singular person, nor did AI see a teenager. For that matter. I decided to call it a night, as I witnessed something that woke me up enough to send me straight back home. The uncanny part of it was, I was only a lane over. While they were standing on the shoulder. So you'd think I'd be able to make out facial features. But I don't recall even seeing faces, just figures. Here's a comment from this post. Dogtown206 commented. I've had a similar experience. I was in high school, and driving home from work about 9.30pm. It was the summer, 
and we used to get about a week or two of heavy rains and lightning. The sky would turn almost brown at night. And you could fell the electrical charge in the air. We don't have those storms anymore. Anyway, it hadn't started to rain yet. But it was a night, you didn't want to be out walking. I see a light moving in the distance. As I get closer, I see it's two flashlights. As I get even closer, I see they are those flashlights that you guide airplanes with being held by a guy. As I drive by, I can only see his torso. But not really a face. None of this seemed weird, at first. Probably my mind trying to explain it. I should note, that in this area. It was an old retired airport the city owned. They would dump piles of dirt, to keep people from driving all over. In my mind, I thought there was a pile of dirt between he and I. Blocking me from seeing his legs. So after I passed him. All of this dawned on me. I quickly turned around no one was even out driving. I shinned my lights, and even my spotlight. And there was nowhere to go. I thought it might be some kind of residual energy. That the lightning may be activated. The town I live in, is known for an alien crash in the 40s. I'm thinking in your case, if you couldn't see their faces. Or they had no characteristics. You maybe saw some black-eyed kids, which are creepy as hell. The stories so far have been head scratches, and a little chilling. If you're enjoying this video, hit the like button. If you want to see more in our paranormal series or any of our series, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to never miss a future video. If you would like to support this channel and have more access to me and your fellow community members, join our Discord. Here you can submit your own encounter, have early access to videos, and so much more. Link is in the description. Share in the comments. This is a repost from a couple of months ago. I posted it in Creepy Encounters, but it was deleted because it's paranormal. And that's not allowed on that sub forum. I just noticed it was deleted, so I thought I would post it here. Story time. So about an hour ago, we were making the first door dash delivery. We started driving down the person's street. And about halfway down, I seen a guy in all black. With a completely blacked out face. I have schizophrenia. And my main visual hallucination, is a guy in all black. With the same fully blacked out. Shadowed out face. Just like that guy. So, I just thought it was a hallucination. And I was about to just ignore it. But a split second later, my sister goes. OMG. Do you see that guy? His face is completely blacked out. So. Apparently it wasn't just my brain being fun. So, I looked into the rear view mirror and watched him walking halfway in the middle of the road. Towards us. We reached the end of the street, and had to turn around. And I lost sight of him for the three seconds it took us to turn around. And he was suddenly gone. We drove down the street a couple of times, and he was just gone. We looked in between houses and everything. But he just vanished. The sun was up and bright, so it wasn't like low light playing tricks. So that's how our day started. Here are some of the comments, from this post. Delevane commented. The men in black are getting, stealthier. Tearsel 3 also commented. Sorry, have to ask. Has your sister been checked for schizophrenia too? Past Brilliant 4283 chimed in. I am sorry that you are battling schizophrenia. I have a childhood friend who is as well. I have referenced the paranormal. Spirit world when discussing the illness of schizophrenia. So it is kind of ironic that your experience is such. I find it quite interesting that your sister experienced this with you. Thank you for sharing this crazy experience. Around Monday or Tuesday of this week. I was sitting at my desk, picking up my PlayStation controller, as I had previously set it down. I looked over slightly, and saw something that appeared to be a grey fog-like creature's head. That was peeking out from under my desk. That had pitch black, where its eyes should be. And a long stretched mouth black mouth as well. Of course, I reacted like a sane person and yelled and jumped back. 
My brother asked me what was wrong, and I tried to tell him that I had saw a face. But he didn't believe me. After that nothing really happened, besides whenever I close my eyes. I see a person burning. I can vividly see them grabbing at their face, it isn't lifelike though. It looks like a drawing. It's been happening every time I close my eyes to sleep. Thursday of this week. I was trying to sleep, I was restless. So I rolled over, to see if there was anything going on in my room. And I looked to my door. Keep in mind my lights are off. And see a tall jet black figure, who can barely fit in my doorway. Average doorway. The thing was very skinny. It looked like he was studying me. Like I was a creature to be watched, in a petting zoo. The creature looked like it was moving its head around. But I couldn't see it well, because it didn't have any facial features. And my room was dark. Whenever I saw it. I locked eyes with it for 10-15 seconds. And I rubbed my eyes, to make sure it wasn't seeing things. The creature started to laugh, its arms grabbed at its sides. As if I was the funniest joke it's ever seen. I turn over and turn back to it and it was still there, it didn't leave. I yelled at my brother to turn on the lights, but of course I took my eyes off of the thing. To look at my brother. But as soon as I turned back to the monster it had left. I tried to play it off cool, and acted like I wanted to go into the closet, and change into more comfortable clothes. I did and then went back to try and sleep, I never looked at the door again, that night. Wooden Discount 7884 commented. I had something similar bothering me. Say prayer to St. Michael, during the daytime. Best time is 3 p.m. Keep saying it until you stop seeing. Sensing it daily. The Bill Shave Eyes also commented. Envision your room flooded with light and love. A white warm light that vibrates on high frequency. Look at nice things before you go to bed. Try to read something to distract yourself. Don't let them have control. And do not react to them as much as you can help it. Frodo the Dodo 81 chimed in. Next time storm him, it and show who is the boss in your room. Maybe a powerful prayer would also help. But show no fear, drive him, it out. R123R987 suggested. Maybe someone played trick on you with mental suggestion. Negative Natural 293 pointed out. Well that's terrifying. Obviously a demon. Next time you experience something, say an Our Father prayer out loud. They can't stand it and flee. It was midday so I want planning on sleeping. But I lay down on my sister's bed just to rest. I was alone at home. I lay on her bed with my legs dangling off the foot of the bed. And as soon as I lay down, I fell asleep, but woke up still laying in bed in her room. The way her room was set up, the door is right in front of the bed. So you can see the door when you're laying down. As soon as I open my eyes, I see this thing standing in the doorway, more floating. She had long black hair and a white dress. It looked like it was flowing underwater, the way her hair and dress moved. It was like underwater. I never saw her face or her feet. Like her face was always just out of my field of view. She didn't want me to see her face. Like if I move my eyes or my head, to look at her face. She would move too so I couldn't see her. Always keeping her face out of my view. I was scared. My heart was racing, but I calmed myself down. Asked it what it wanted. She answered almost, telepathic. I heard her voice, like an echo in my head. She said follow me and I will give you everything you ever wanted. I said, and if I refuse. It said then, I will send you to suffer along with all the other tortured souls. Then she moved her hand, and opened a portal. I saw it it was bright orange pit of lava. No not lava, it was fluid like water. But bright orange and it burned. People were on fire, in the water. And cliffs made of burned people. All screaming in pain and agony. Imagine a cliff, but instead of rocket was people burned black, screaming in pain. That's what I saw. And them trying to climb out, giving me their hands. Begging for help and then falling to the burning water below. Then she closed the portal. And said again follow me or this is where you will go. 
I remember telling it that I will follow it. Then a flash. And I got a vision of what I truly wanted at that time. And I opened my eyes with a terrible feeling of dread and sorrow. Here's a couple of comments from this post. Throwing Tiny Stills commented. Are you religious at all? Some of the specific things you described stood out to me. They stood out, because the descriptions match those in the Quran. What was the nature of what you truly wanted? How did you feel after you woke up? Were you distressed by the dream? Or was it more a feeling of something intense had ended, and now you were introspective? Edit, follow-up question. Did you feel scared of her? What was her actual presence like? Intimidating? Evil? Peaceful? Or just matter of fact? OP responded to throwing tiny stills. I am not religious. I believe in God and demons, but don't follow any particular religion. The presence itself, at first, was intimidating. Filled me with fear and panic. But I managed to calm myself down. Through breathing and prayer. Once I calmed myself down it feels neutral. But yes, I am curious as to what the Quran says. If you want to explain explain you can message me. Sorry if this is the wrong community. New to Reddit here. So I have been living in the same apartment for two years now. I'm no stranger to random ghosts appearing. Because I'm a magnet for them. But I have one particular one that seems to follow me a lot more lately. Last night, I was in my room with my roommate. And I have this big closet that has two slide doors that open it. When I was talking to my roommate. She had her back to the closet, and I was facing it when the visitor showed its face to me. She had seen it a few times, and told me about it. But I've never seen it fully until then. It was peeking out from behind my closet door, which is really tall, all hunched over. I'd say it's about 8 or 9 feet tall, wears all black with a pale white face. Long black hair. Dark eyes. No eyebrows. It's been around for the past year now, but it doesn't do anything. It just seems to be curious and watching. Any idea what it could be? Thanks. Edit, I came home today, and everything was fine. Until I heard my dog barking wildly and my roommate screaming. I went over to investigate, and she said she saw it again standing in the corner of her room. She says it had been showing up, and scaring her. And she wants to get rid of it, because it not only scares her, but the dog as well. Any tips would be appreciated. Edit 1218. I just saved our apartment and instructed it to leave. Hoping that helps. Here are some of the comments from this post. Tinker1080 commented. Burning sage is the best way to cleanse the house. Just in case it does mean you any harm. OP responded to Tinker1080. I figured as much, we are about to go out to try and find some despite the snowstorm. Thank you. Current Rai885 also commented. Wow. This one seems very attached to you. Do you think you can take a picture or a video of it when it appears? Sorry if my English is bad. I'm French. OP responded to current Rai885. It kind of appears at random. So I can't really time it. I might invest in a camera. To see if I can set one up, but I don't want to make it mad. I believe I met my boyfriend's double a few years ago. When I was 19, I still lived with my parents. My best friend and my boyfriend lived in the same town. An hour away, but in different areas. My best friend invited me over to spend the night so I did. I always slept on the couch, in the living room. In her little apartment, my best friend always made sure to lock the doors and windows, because her neighborhood wasn't the most safe. I would usually double check too. Because I slept by the front door. Around 2 in the morning, I woke up to use the bathroom. I got up, went about my business. And when I came out my boyfriend was standing in the living room. He was working night shift. At the time. And would usually take his break at 2 am. But I was shocked at how he even got into the apartment. Because I knew the door was locked. He brought me a vape because I asked him to earlier that day. We talked for a bit and he seemed a bit off. 
it was like he was looking through me. I ended up laying back down, because he said he had to go back to work. He leaned down and kissed me, but right before leaving. He turned to me and said, tell sister's name, to get some more locks. It was way too easy to break into here. Then he left. I woke up in the morning and told my friend what had happened. And yes, the door was unlocked. Because I forgot to lock it again. Later that day, when my boyfriend woke up he came over. I thanked him for bringing me the vape again and he looked so confused. He told me he never left work that night. And still to this day, three years later. Denies that he ever left work and I believe him. So my friend went and bought a new lock, for the door. Turns out, about two weeks after this all happened. Some of the apartments were robbed. But hers wasn't. Maybe it's because the double warned her to get another lock. This still creeps me out so badly to this day. How did the double know to bring me a vape? Did it know that the apartments would get robbed? And was it trying to warn my friend? I thought doubles were supposed to be evil. Why was this one good? Here's some of the comments from this post. Homesick Traveler commented. If you still know the exact date. I would be interested if CERN was running any special experiment that night. OP responded to Homesick Traveler. I'm not sure of the exact date, it was in the winter of 2019. Kenlin inquired. Did you have the vape in the morning? OP responded to Kenlin. Yes, I did. That's what is so crazy to me. How did this thing know that I wanted a vape? And why did I have it in the morning? Son of Lycaion suggested. In another timeline, your friend got robbed. Your boyfriend stressed out about it enough to etherically project back in time and prevent the event. I dunno. I just made that up, but it's possible, maybe. Homesick Traveler responded to Son of Lycaion. I think maybe in another timeline the boyfriend brought the vape and saw the robbers casing the apartments. After falling asleep, the boyfriend shifted timelines with himself that worked all night. OP responded to Homesick Traveler. Definitely an interesting theory. This has been a crazy ride and I'll bring you any updates in future videos. If you've stuck with me until the end, you're amazing. If you want to catch more episodes in the Paranormal series, or any of my other series, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to never miss a future video. If you enjoyed this content, smash the like button and leave a comment down below. If you would like to support this channel, and be a part of a growing community, we have a Discord server. Check out the link in the description. You can also submit your own encounters, and have more access to me and your fellow community members. Join the community. Until next time, be safe out there.